In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to enhance your arpeggios using a few simple tools in Ableton. So right now we have this transistor analog sound. And um, you can obviously do this with whatever sound you want. Something plucky is usually good for arpeggios. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is add a chord effect. I already have mine right here. Uh, this chord MIDI effect essentially allows you to turn one note into a chord by adding these different notes on top. So plus three, plus seven, plus 14, that's a minor ninth. So I like to use this chord effect in combo with the arpeggiator effect to quickly audition different ideas. So if we add this arpeggiator after the chord effect, this is, that's important, you'll hear that we're actually now arpeggiating that chord that's being built from this one single MIDI note. So right away, it's pretty cool. Um, the reason I like to audition with the MIDI chord effect is because if you're making an arpeggio that's spanning, you know, three or four octaves, like a really involved thing like this, for example, if you want to change a single note, you got to, you know, open up the MIDI thing, change it, go back, maybe change the style, etc. It's just there's a lot of back and forth. If you're dealing with multiple octaves, you know, you have to make your MIDI screen so big and it's just a pain. So instead, you know, you can just take the root note or the fifth, the fourth, some some strong note in the scale, get creative with it and then use this thing this chord effect to quickly audition different ideas. So right off the bat, a lot quicker, a lot easier. So that's the first big tip. Second tip is if your synth is velocity sensitive, which I would say for sound design, it's always useful to do that. Um, if you don't know how to do it in a specific synth, just look in the manual. Um, but you can attach velocity to the amp and to the filter envelopes so that it affects both the filter and the volume. So this chord effect right here has a spot for velocity. That's what this is. So I'm going to put a couple of these at the lowest velocity and I'm going to put them super low down so minus 36 semitones minus 35 minus 34. So what I did essentially just now was create three notes in this chord that can pretty much not be heard at all. It's essentially ghost notes and that translates to rests in the arpeggiator. As you can see or here. So the cool thing now is as we mess with the style, you'll notice that it gets a little bit, those rests get dispersed throughout the uh, arpeggio. And now once you have this cool pattern, you can change the offset, which is essentially where the arpeggio is starting in the group of notes that, that uh, make it up. So maybe it's starting on the fourth note or the second note. It's essentially inverting the chord. And now you can go back and, you know, continue to audition new ideas. I'm going to unmap these so that I can change the velocities. So a lot of cool things that can come out of this. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention is when you're first figuring out what you want your pattern to be, keep in mind the actual clip length because this right now is four bars. So after four bars, it's going to loop. But if we were to do it only after one bar, you would notice it's like a different uh, polyrhythm that's created and then it's reset faster. Uh, 
Um, a similar effect can be created just by keeping the MIDI the length it is and then just changing the amount of repeats. So that's how many times the arpeggio goes through a whole cycle. Um, this transpose shift, uh, you can add, you know, a full 12, a full octave step on top of what you already have. Um, that's pretty straightforward. You can also put the key of the scale in and then just add steps of the scale. But personally, I don't really use this that much. I'd rather do it by hand. And I'll show you, once you have a pattern you like, so say we like this, create a new MIDI channel, and you're going to take the output of that ARP Enhancer MIDI channel, post effects of the actual um, rack that we have, so that transistor rack, and then record. And you have to arm it as well. So now you'll see we have the arpeggio that we heard from all those effects. We can delete the low velocity ones very easily because they're, you know, colored differently. And that takes the rests out. And then we have, you know, what exactly we were listening to, but we can modify it custom as we wish. So we want it to bring every other note down or something like that. And then, you know, if we duplicate the instrument so that we can actually hear it, just make sure you set this to off so that you're not feeding any more MIDI from the other track. Mute the arpeggiator and the chord. You have to unarm it as well. Or sorry, you have to mute that, obviously. Yeah, so this just allows you to customize it even further. But the things that I discussed earlier are more for auditioning ideas and getting you to the point where you have this arpeggio that you're happy with. So hopefully uh, these strategies will help you take your arpeggios to the next level and make them a little bit more rhythmically interesting than just straight 16th notes, which is kind of played out and doesn't really help your track stand out much. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.